Alright, playing Axis Empire still, and here we're in the autumn of 1945. Uh, just heading into it now. For the Japanese, they chose the Imperial Conference this card, which doesn't give them a lot here. Uh, adds to their force pool. I don't remember what the Rokoku Go Offensive. Uh, I don't remember what it did, but it did a little bit less. Uh, it didn't seem worth uh, using. I, or maybe it was illegal. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. What the hell? Uh, give a tank step there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, it didn't get the additional troops. And those additional forces look like they might be more useful than an offensive. The Japanese have cleared out here, uh, starting on Ulan Bator, and then they'll be able to spin over and, do the, uh, and handle the rest of the Russians. Russia's really going to lose in the Far East. Uh, the only question is, well, are they going to be able to have a resurgence before they're completely wiped out? Sending some troops down through Indochina to make the uh, ride through Siam and down into Malaysia, trying to save that. It's going to be too late, but at least they'll have something down there. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about it on their side. Over on the German side, um, well, last video I spoke about about you know, how uh, Hitler's uh, directive at Stalingrad could be uh, simulated with the uh, no retreat counter. Well, there's another way the game simulates it, which is this command failure. And the Germans managed to get this. They played their Super V weapons, which really do almost nothing in this game except trigger a lot of cards. Uh, they give you a directive roll, boop, boop, boop. And... Um, you get some extra troops condition potentially, but as long as you're still doing okay. But uh, the command failure came from the die roll, and it does kind of show a not, not that the Germans had anything great to do, but they couldn't pull out of the position they're in. They're having to abandon this. Uh, right now, it's really a race to see who gets the Balkans, and it's pretty clearly the West is going to win this. I don't know if there's a reason to play any of this out. Um, it's going to be a maximum score board, no matter what. And I'm going to start diverting resources as quickly as possible, no matter what. But, eh, it could be of some interest. Um, oh, oh, we've got the Turks still fighting on here in Iraq. That's about... The size of theirs. I'm not sure what's up with these German forces, though. Uh, <laughs> there's nowhere they can take replacements, so it's kind of a, a pointless situation. They lost their logistics unit that they had positioned forward, and that wasn't in supply, so they couldn't have gotten anything there anyway. So they, they're out of supply at this point. It's just what can they do? All right, well, we'll go on to the Allies and you know, watch the dismemberment. For the Allies, we have something called Operation King here. Um, some heavier forces. The main issue with this is, this is for, uh, is useful for, it could also work in India, but it doesn't do much good there. It's useful for taking the Philippines out as a minor ally to Japan. Uh, by landing in the Philippines, if they can take a city, uh, they end up causing the country to switch sides. The problem is, right now there's the northern monsoon, but next turn they have a shot. If, if it were a two-turn operation, it would be pretty easy because there's just not that much of a defense there. But in a one-turn attack, they may not be able to take it all at once. So they're kind of hoarding their resources. But while they do that, they're advancing here in, uh, towards Malaysia, and they've taken Borneo as well. Come off the board. So we can see that the... Uh, the Western Allies are actually doing a pretty good job of advancing quickly in Asia here. Maybe too good, I'm probably cheating again. Um, over here in Europe, wow, uh, Operation Shingle gave me a couple of blitzes. I didn't really need them. Tons and tons of troops, extra replacements, none of which I need. Uh, but storm through Yugoslavia, Greece, 
This was done in an exploitation type of action, uh, actually post-exploitation, the reserve movement, to grab that and make sure it doesn't fall into Russian hands, which it would have after Yugoslavia fell. Uh, Romania, Hungary, these have all been converted uh, to allied countries now, and they'll be supporting. Really, Bulgaria is still here, and they're going to put up a bit of a fight. Uh, Yugoslavia put up a fight. Romania didn't have any troops in it. Turkey's the last real bastion, and I've got to get those Turks back to Ankara to prevent Turkey from just collapsing. Uh, trying to fight out here, everywhere where I am, it's going to be hard, and Turkey's going to just fall if I'm not careful. Um, Yeah, and that's without an avalanche. Avalanche allows you to do it just by taking a city. So Istanbul would be sufficient to make Turkey more or less collapse. Uh, but in this case, I have to actually take the capital. All right, on to the Russians. Um, they've got to slog their way through these German troops. And we finish things up with the Russians. Card play is becoming less and less important at this point. Uh, Chinese insurgency, there was no effect there. And then over here, production uh, directive. This kind of wasn't counting on the game ending in Europe so quickly. Uh, factory production, this would have reduced their delay roll as well. It's in play, but it ain't going to help. And now it's like out of play over in... Uh, over in the Pacific, from what I understand. Uh, of the correction to the rules that I had. Um, not that the rules were wrong, my understanding was wrong. Uh, pull back, try to maintain something here in Asia, and then over in the European front, um, demolishing the unsupplied Germans. The headquarters don't help much there because they're no longer in supply, they're just regular units now. So. Uh, the German army is pretty easy to knock out up here. They had a little trouble with these panzers here. And then they swung into Turkey, of all things, trying to make the grab there. They'd like to get Persia and Iraq, too, but that's not going to happen. But at least uh, the Russians would like to have some say in uh, the reshaping of the world. That doesn't matter in this game. There's no victory between the, the two different allies. I find that a little bit... Lacking, but usually that's handled so poorly in most games, uh, or is sort of the fueler for uh, you know a patent type scenario. Let's just steam into the Russians while we're here, um, and the truth is, although the Cold War was being positioned for and fought for, World War Two was really about winning it almost no matter what. Uh, it was not, there was never a situation of, well, except maybe in Churchill's mind, eh, let's just let the Nazis win. <laughs> um, because they'll be better than the, the Soviets. There was definitely a, uh, there was definitely a secondary purpose though, and I feel like, at the very least, if I were playing, I would be doing what the Allies are doing here, grabbing as much as I can, and what the Russians are doing, trying to uh, make that piece as good as possible, even if the rules don't support anything about it. Um, Asia is going to be a totally different matter. And really, it looks to me like uh, the Soviet factions have taken a real hit in this war compared to what the West has. All right, let's move on to uh, September, October. Uh, we're going to see... The weather get a little worse in Europe, but that's okay. And we're gonna see, um, God knows what the weather does here. We got the south southern monsoon. So, really, where the fighting's happening is gonna get better weather now. All right. Okay, what the Axis can do now is getting more and more limited, especially here on the European map, where basically the Germans are pretty much stuck at this river line. and. They're going to get wiped out. It's just a matter of, of time there uh, and up there. Trying to get some Turks into Ankara, but it isn't going to happen in time. The Russians are going to get there before them. Over here on the Pacific map, the Japanese have uh, taken Ulaanbaatar finally. And they're going to push forward. I don't know what that little... See, these aren't listed here in the delay box things. All these plus ones, I 
don't know if they're just for the Jap uh, just for the Chinese effect or what um, that's what my guess is is that this is the route into uh, into communist China's delay it, it, it'll affect communist China's delay boxes it's just not spelled out there and I don't feel like looking through the rules to try to find it it can't be Russia Russia doesn't depend that much on Chinese production um, anyway the Russians are getting pushed back we're gonna see you know how much pressure the Allies are able to put on Japan and then whenever this cleans up we'll remove it well, in the West, I was able to use this speedy little paratrooper to actually be able to reach Ankara in time. So even Turkey fell. The entirety of the Balkans is pro-Allied. Uh, Russia really has nothing they can grab. They might be able to get Persia at the most. Iraq is already not Allied, but close enough uh, with Baghdad there, with the Turks having left. Um, the Russians have the job of clearing their own country, and that's about it. Uh, they're going to get the Baltic states out of this as well. But I'd say that's pretty much done. I have to count the points uh, and take the Russian turn first because points don't get counted until then, and I don't want to make that effort twice. The, I know I was about three points off, and right now I've gained, I think, two. So I'm probably still not there unless another Russian city goes over, which it might. This is uh, vulnerable, but... I'm not sure. Anyway, over here in the uh, Pacific map, which is where the game is being played now, uh, the Allies continued their march up into Malaysia, repositioning some force in Borneo, but they managed successfully to do this invasion uh, of the Philippines. And this actually points out a problem why the Japanese might not want an ally as opposed to conquering things. In this case, the Philippines could only be defended from invasion by a carrier fleet. Uh, the Japanese have a couple of air forces they couldn't bring into, into play. Hmm, I forgot to use this. I, uh, yeah, I don't think they attacked anything. Okay. Um, now, the Allies obviously had enough air forces and had range from Palau to be able to launch that invasion no matter what. Uh, and it took like all their transport capability to bring all this stuff here. Um, they've got more down here. Uh, so that, you know, it's a pretty, it was a pretty heavy undertaking, but uh, that would not have failed. But I could see where it could have been a closer run thing and the Japanese would want to use their air forces to defend themselves there. In this case, they couldn't. And we're slowly seeing their empire collapsing, as it were. All right, well, uh, on to the Russians, and then I guess we'll wrap this and send up the autumn. Okay, so here we are at the end of the uh, autumn, 1945. Let's talk a little about the Pacific first. Um, count of the points. The Russians didn't really do anything, and probably I didn't do anything at all, from what it looks like. Um, they want to be in a better position to defend the cities they're in, but uh, the best they can do is make strong points at this point, I think. Anyway, they're going to lose them. There's almost no question. But point-wise, we're at 11. We've actually stayed about even. Even though the Allies are pulling into things like Borneo and the Philippines, uh, and there should be something here. Oh, I know why. Uh, I removed the logistics marker. And I believe that means I'm going to want to take one of these from somewhere else. Okay. Because that's too important to just lose trivially. Okay, so, although it may still happen, because the Russians just got their partisan base, so they can, in the uh, delay box somewhere, I think, no? No, they're forceful. Uh, so they can actually start to put something into play. So, there's sort of this, you know, whatever they're losing over in the, in the Pacific Islands, they're regaining off of Russia. Now, that can't continue forever, and they're not going to win the game off of 
pushing it to the automatic victory. But they may be able to actually win the map, conceivably, because the Allies have to bring this down, not only all the way down to here, but all the way up to here, which is a negative 9 to negative 12. That's a lot of territory to regain. Now, once they start flowing across here, especially if I cheat uh, like I did for the Japanese, uh, moving across Asia will be very, very easy. But uh, if the Japanese can put up a reasonable defense and the weather is paid attention to, it might be very difficult for them to come back. Over on the European map, well, the Allies actually have it at negative 14. Two more cities I can identify. These two. There is nothing else that will fall. Um, for the Allies to get an automatic victory in the game, Russia is going to have to probably go to war with Finland or, uh, you know, somebody's going to have to invade something that otherwise I wouldn't normally want to do. I, I don't know what I'm going to take on because you know, most of the miners are in place. Finland's probably the easy... Oh, they don't have one. No, they're no good. I was going to say they're probably the easiest thing with one. But actually, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, not having Italy in the game, and they only had one, kind of made it... Because I counted and counted and counted, and all I can come up with is 16. I can't get to that 17. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I do not believe that it makes... I mean, I've had enough trouble accepting that this German army down here wouldn't have surrendered already, and I think they will. Um, so, anyway, what I'm going to do is I think everything's been kind of played out. The German armies are contained. They'll give in. Turkey has been decided. The Allies are there. And there's nothing else of interest at all, vaguely, on this map, except, oh gee, why can't I get this marker into there without Italy in the game? Um, so yeah, I'd have to invade someone, and Italy, Spain, I don't know who else. I don't see any other options. And that seems kind of funny, because... The Turkish one is here, but the Italian one is the equivalent, so I'm not sure if the historical victory is there. Maybe I miscounted. Maybe I'm perfect once those two go. I don't know. It just felt a little funny to see, hey, the whole map's gone. There's nothing. And even this, if I count these in, I still end up not making it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this sucker up and move to just a one-map game because that's where all the interest is, really. Um, not sure. I don't think I play cards or anything, really. The problem here is, what about... I would like to be shifting forces over, so I, I may look to see if... because I think there are rules for that in Dicenso itself, but now, in a combined game, I kind of didn't read those, and what I should be doing is triggering some kind of movement with these cards. I'll look into that, see what I can get. Because essentially we've had victory in Europe already. And we'll see what that does to affecting the Japanese side. I think. Also move the videos uh, over to the Dicenso game itself. Because I feel like the majority of focus has been on the Total or Krieg side for the most part. Well now it's all going to be over here. So only makes sense. Bit of confusion, but whatever. Alright, up it goes then.